Where are you going, Mr. Dowd? I'm just looking for someone. Why don't you come back inside? Oh, all right, if you want me to. I... This seems to be so pleasant out here. I... You know, you, you, you two look very nice dancing together. I, I used to know a whole lot of dancers. The, the uh, flea hop and, and what's the, uh, the black bottom, the, the varsity drag. The... I don't know, I just don't seem to have any time anymore. I have so many things to do. What is it you do, Mr. Dow? Well, Harvey and I sit on the bars and have a drink or two, play the jukebox. And soon the faces of all, all the other people, they turn toward mine and they smile. And they're saying, we, we don't know your name, mister, but you're a very nice fellow. Harvey and I warm ourselves in all these golden moments. We've entered as strangers. Soon we have friends. And they come over and they, they sit with us. They drink with us. They talk to us. They tell about the big, terrible things they've done and the big, wonderful things they'll do. Their hopes and their regrets, their loves and their hates, all very large, because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. And then, I introduce them to Harvey, and he's bigger and grander than anything they offer me. And and when they leave, they leave impressed. The same people seldom come back, but that's, that's envy, my dear. There's a little bit of envy in the best of us. And that's too bad, isn't it? How did you happen to call him Harvey? Well, Harvey's his name. How do you know that? Well, that was a rather interesting coincidence on that, Doctor. One night several years ago, I was walking early in the evening down along Fairfax Street. It was between 18th and 19th. I, you know the block? Yes, yes. I, I just put Ed Hickey into a taxi. Ed had been mixing his rye with his gin, and, and he... I just felt that he needed conveying. Well, anyway, I was walking down along the street, and I, I heard this voice saying, good evening, Mr. Dowd. Well, I, I turned around, and here was this big six-foot rabbit leaning up against a lamppost. I, I thought nothing of that, because when you've lived in the town as long as I've lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. And naturally, I went over to chat with him, and, and he said to me, he said, Ed Hickey was a little spiff this evening, or could I be mistaken? Well, of course, he was not mistaken. I think the world and all of Ed, but he was spiffed. Well, we talked like that for a while. And then, and then I said to him, I said, you have the advantage on me. You know my name, and I don't know yours. And, and right back at me, he said, what name do you like? Well, I I didn't even have to think twice about that. I, Harvey's always been my favorite name. So I said to him, I said, Harvey. And uh, he, and th th this is this is the, the interesting thing about the whole thing. He said, What a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. Dowd. What was your father's name? John. John Stuyvesant. Tell me, Dowd. When you were a child, didn't you have a playmate? Someone with whom you spent many happy hours? Yes. Yes, I did, Doctor. 
Didn't you? Yes. What was his name? Vern. Vern McElhenney. Did you ever know the McElhenney, Doctor? No. Oh, that's too bad. There were a lot of them, and they circulated. Very nice people. One, just wonderful people. Think carefully, Dad. Didn't you know somebody, sometime, someplace by the name of Harvey? Didn't you ever know anybody by that name? No. No, not one, Doctor. Maybe that's why I always had such hopes for it. <laughs>